Hello and welcome. It's Liesl Tevisham here of SavvySelfGrowth.com and I'm feeling really excited and privileged to have this conversation today with my coach, George Cowell. We're going to talk about a topic that's close to my heart and maybe to his as well, which is visibility for introverts. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about George and the rest will come out in our lovely conversation today. So since 2009, George has been helping coaches, consultants, counselors, and healers to grow their audience through authentic online marketing. He teaches people specifically how to grow their audience using social media, webinars, online courses, written posts, videos, and their books. George's values, which might warm many introvert hearts, are sincerity, generosity, and caring. And I'm really looking forward to this interview. Welcome, George. Thank you, Liesl. I'm looking forward to this as well. And I'll just say, you know, you are such an expert on how introverts can thrive. So I am looking forward to your own thoughts on visibility for introverts. And we could definitely just have a conversation and, and we can both add our insights to it. Thank you so much, George. Yeah, the best stuff I think comes out when there's just a conversation between two people who really care yeah. about what they do. Yeah. So um, I, I work with many introverts, George, who really it's their heart's desire to make a difference in the world. And I know that you work with coaches, healers, consultants, and um, so on, who also have a heart's desire to make a difference in the world. Oh, yes. And for many of us, many of them, they struggle with visibility for their business. And now <laughs> I know because I've been there so long, um, if we don't have our business visible, if nobody knows what we actually do and what we offer, we have actually what I call an expensive hobby. Um, mm. We invest and invest and invest money in learning how to do it and another course and another course and another course and not actually doing the work yeah. to get in front of people. Yeah. So I wonder if you identify with that or can say a mm -hmm. few thoughts about what ways yeah. you found are good ways to get in front of people. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. I'm betting well, they may work for introverts because I've seen you market and it's a way that, that I believe work very well for introverts. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So the first of all, I mean we have to realize that the ideas that we have, the experiences we have within us feel really valuable to us, feel insightful and because we came up with them or we had the peak experience or something. And it's easy for us to kind of make the assumption that, well, if it's valuable to me, then it's obviously valuable to everyone. I mean, it's everyone should know that I'm very valuable. I have experiences or um, skills that I can help them with. And so especially I think as introverts, we uh, because we don't have as much physical, we don't like as much physical contact with lots of people as extroverts do. So, so we, uh, yeah, so, so what happens is when we don't, you know, do the physical contact, well, then what, what, what else do we do? You know, and I, I wrote this, this post about it where, you know, I, I'm, I said, you don't have to do in-person networking if you don't want to. Uh, I, I've always been, uh, uncomfortable with in-person networking. I always kind of get stuck with just one person in a corner talking the whole night kind of thing. And yes. that person not, might not even be like <laughs> the right fit for me to be talking to and uh, vice versa. It's just like we're stuck with each other. Um, when it comes to sharing our experiences and wisdom, uh, the internet, of course, is amazing. And so I haven't gone to a networking event for years um, the only time I've gone in, a, I would really in the past five years, the only time I've gone to a networking event is when I am the speaker. <laughs> oh, wow. And the rest of my visibility is done online. So that, I guess just to complete the point that I started making, as introverts, there's, there's especially a danger that we think, well, because what I have experienced is valuable, what I know is valuable, therefore other people must naturally be able to find me. But if we don't have content out there, we just have to be scientific here about this. Like if there's no content out there, nobody can find us. We're just here in our own rooms and we can't even expect our friends and family to like 
go out there and knock on doors for us, you know, um, because they have their own lives and we post something on Facebook, our, our profile and Hey, how come people aren't spreading the word about me and my message? It, because again, I, probably as introverts, we are, we tend to uh, make that assumption more than extroverts might. <clears throat> so, so to, so it's an important thing to, uh, what I've had to learn is to be, uh, agnostic about um, what I have, to, the value of what I have to say and, and, and the value of my content. What I mean by that is I don't make assumptions whether what I'm going to say is incredibly valuable or, or that it's not good enough. Mm. Okay. I just say, you know, I no, I don't know. So I'm just going to try to be scientific about it and just put the message out there and let others um, vote on what is valuable and what is not valuable by simply, and Facebook is so easy for that because you, you put stuff out there and you know that, wow, how come some things people just like and comment and share and some things they don't. Um, and it's, of course, there are certain things on Facebook people like me, you post your own, you post your own photo, people, people are always going to like that more. But besides your own photo and besides puppy dogs and kittens and and babies, okay? Besides those things, um, when we just share a message, whether it's, it's through writing or, or even through video, or if we like to take photos, we take, you know, um, the audience will tell us. And, and I think the hard part for introverts, of course, is waiting for the audience to tell us yeah. whether it's valuable or not. But I just invite all of, all of us introverts, and I should mention, I haven't, in the last, actually, yes, the last, couple times I took the Myers-Briggs, um, I am slightly introverted now. I used to be slightly extroverted back in college. Hi. And I think over the years, I've just become more and more introverted. Um, and now I'm, I'm, yeah, a couple points on the, on the introvert side now. So, uh, so I, yeah, so I, I basically, and, and I think part of the introvert strategy is to, is to, weave in breaks and rest, um, especially after a visibility type of thing. So for example, right. after this call, well, I have one other short call after, right after this one, but, but I, I put my calls, you know, in, 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 a, in a row, not more than an hour and a half or so. And then I like take a nap or like I, I go on a dog walk or something like that. And same thing with writing a blog post, you know, if I write a blog post or do a video, I need to go and take a break. You know, I think it's really important rather than somehow trying to push through. I think that's part of the, mm. part of the strategy there. Uh, I love what you just say, George, because um, there is a lot of um, stuff out there, a lot of advice, guidance, and so on that, that tells us we have to do our, do our business in a certain way, you know, and, and this yeah. is, kind of the right way and it all seems to be geared very much to an extrovert way of doing things yes that's that's i know is not sustainable for an introvert and then i think that's when some things can start going wrong for introverts as we try and do things a way that's not good for our energy system and i know yes. you're big on self-care as well because i yeah. <laughs> i heard you talk often on that and you took a peek in my diary and said well where's your self-care i don't see your self-care in your diary <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's yeah. one thing i really appreciate about you so if you could say maybe a more a few more things about that yeah sustain a bit sustainable visibility yes oh yeah i love that i love that um <clears throat> so if you look at my calendar, you know, in my one-to-one -one client sessions, I'll let people peek at my actual calendar. It is <clears throat> dotted with, you know, naps, you know, lunch, you know, so I have a, I have a, I, I'm famous for taking multiple naps a day. Um, I, I take a, a, you know, these are short, like, well, 15, 20 minute naps. So like I take one after breakfast, I take one, at, you know, late morning, I take one after lunch, I take one late afternoon. And literally, it's like, it's like I'm a different person when I, when I, when I wake up from the nap. Or, and often, I don't even fall asleep. I just lay down on the couch and relax and rest. But just doing that is very helpful. And I always, so what I do now on my calendars, I always place calls and sort of 
visibility type of things before a nap or before a walk. I, I have a dog, so walk my dog a couple times a day. So, so like, like literally my calendar is like dotted. It's just like, you know, one, uh, one and a half to two hour work chunks and then a, a walk or a nap or a lunch or something uh, throughout the whole day. I, you know, I work until maybe 7, 7 p.m. my time. Um, so, 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 so in terms of uh, sustainable visibility, <clears throat> what I do, uh, I think it's important for every introvert to find the, the medium that they prefer to work in. And here's my cat, also very introverted, except, well, actually, he's not, he's not introverted. He only jumps up when there's a visibility moment. <laughs> he only jumps up when I'm doing a, a Facebook video of some kind or whatever on a call. He never jumps up when I'm just working by myself. So I guess he is an introvert. <laughs> oh, he just loves the conversation. Yeah. My other cat's very introverted. Conversations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, for example, when I first started to make content regularly, I really disliked writing. Uh, for all my life, I've actually disliked writing. I had a hard time with it. And so... Why well, started with making videos now videos also had a hard time with it for years until finally a friend kind of lovingly forced me to to make a video for for his audience um, you know small group uh, of people first and then I made one for my clients they seemed fine with it and then I, I had to learn basically that uh, the only person judging how I look on video is me mm -hmm. And how I sound, you know, the only, per I mean, yeah, I'm sure other people judge, but I judge the harshest. We all judge ourselves on video <clears throat> images, of course, even our writing. We are the harshest judge. Uh, nobody else really cares. They're just looking for the substance of the message. Um, and yes, of course, if we are more entertaining, things tend to be a bit more viral, but it's the substance of the message that matters the most. I find. Uh, so I, I have made, by now I've made more than 500 videos in the past couple of years. And I will tell you, and you have seen some of these where I, I tell people on the video, listen, I'm not feeling great today. I didn't feel like making this video. And the reason why I say these things is because I, part of my message is encouraging others to, to show up in the way that makes sense for them. Rather, even if sometimes conditions are not op are, are not optimal, <laughs> and so that's why I say those things. Now, I'm not saying everyone should go on video and says I don't feel like doing this, but for me, I need to say that for my audience to see that. So, right. um, so I started with video after a friend forced me into it, and I find that wow, nobody's judging me like I'm judging myself. <clears throat> so maybe it's okay. I started making more start making a few for my audience for my own you know group of supportive people first and then larger and larger audiences and now now i'm totally comfortable with video of course and then at the same time as i started doing video i shortly after i i had this idea that you know i personally at that point i didn't like watching people on video talking about a message mm -hmm. i was like well for for the people like me who just prefer to quickly read what it's about maybe i should just quickly write out what i said in the video and so i did that um, you know, just without any kind of pressure, I even wrote it just on my phone real quick. Like, okay, if you're, if you're not going to watch this video, I basically, I said this. <clears throat> and after doing that dozens of times, I realized I overcame my writer's block of many years. Oh, my word. And it's just, and it's really, it's miraculous for me because I, I thought I would never write, never, you know, never write. And now I have two books and a third one about to come out because of practice. And I think that's something introverts can appreciate too, is we know that, that we are capable of, of, of anything we want to, 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 to really do, to really set our, our mind and our heart to. And I just say introvert, or introverts with a growth mindset, and I hope that we can all be that, who are introverts, you know, we can be anything we, we practice. We become anything we practice. So be, by, by the, pra and, and to, and the key is to ease into it. You know? yes. And so that's what I did. It was like, ah, oh, no big deal. 
this is just a quick thing that I'm going to write to those who don't want to watch the video. So, so I called it casual, consistent action. <laughs> I love the power it. of casual, consistent actions. Like, oh, no big deal. I'm just going to do a quick piece of writing or no big deal. I'm just going to show up on video. And even if my hair is not well done, or I think for, for men, it's, it's easier <laughs> Sli <laughs> than, than, than women, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, we, we care less, I think about, um, so, but still like, Hey, no big deal. My cat's on my lap. Actually, that, that's actually a plus for, for video. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely people love cats, dogs, and, and baby goats. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love so many of the points you made, um, especially I think here's a key point for introverts. Often, and I, I hesitate to say many of the things I want to say about introverts because it could sound like I'm judging extroverts or I'm saying things that are, yeah. you know, putting us in boxes and stuff. That's mm -hmm. not what it's about. But for many introverts, it's really hard to do things in big leaps because yes. it stretches their nervous system too much. Yes. And then there's too much fear and too much hesitation and drawing back completely into the cave, into the box. That's right. And then no progress happens after that. It's like, okay, I'm never trying that again. So <laughs> what I love, what you said now was um, easing into it mm -hmm. and that you had the attitude in your mind of no big deal. This is, this is not like the, the be all and end all, the very best blog post I ever have to have written. It's not right. like none of that pressure. Yes. Yeah. I have, as I said, you know, become agnostic about my content. I can no longer predict. I really, this is really true. I cannot predict which of my content pieces are going to do well. I mean, I have some sense of what the topics are that tend to do well, but I can't know, like I have worked so hard on certain pieces of writing, put it out there. <laughs> People just don't get it. They just, it's not something that, it's something that resonated with me, but because of my combination of life experiences, it really mattered to me, but maybe my audience didn't have the exact same combination of life experiences. And then there are certain things that I put out there that are not very well, not polished at all. And yet, people go, wow, that was amazing. And I said, really? That seemed kind of obvious to me, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. but that's the magic of sort of the, the, the inherent uniqueness of each of us is that there are certain things that um, we are so naturally gifted at or things that are obvious to us, but are amazing yes. to our audience. And so I just want to encourage all of us introverts to ease into it. No big deal. Don't judge your own content and put it out there. And whether the content is just a piece of a teaching or a story or a invitation to work with you or to buy this product or service, no big deal. Put it out there. Hey, I don't know. I'm going to be a scientist. I'm going to see. And the other thing is, don't look at the stats like every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I still have to learn that, you know, a little bit, but, but, you know, just put it out there, go take a nap, <laughs> put it out there, go for a walk, go do some chores or whatever you want to do to, to kind of relax and rest. And then, you know, check, check the stats every now and then. And with, with some distance, we are less attached to the thing that we just put out there. So, that's that makes it easier to check the numbers after a day or after two days or whatever it may be and when we check the numbers we just go huh that's interesting oh huh, i'm not curious oh oh that one didn't go anywhere oh people really like that one oh okay you know it's like what, what can i learn from that you know that's the second question we can ask right, right. Yeah, I, again, there's just so many points I want to sort of comment on, but I'll choose this one maybe for now is, um, I think recently I watched one of your videos where you talked about you, you put out an offer and not many people bought and, right. and you sort of allowed yourself a little bit of a wallow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, okay, what's next? So if you could yeah. say a few words about that, because yes. I think that's where yes. many introverts actually or just many yeah. people because we all yes, just people yes. who want love approval and want to feel yes. secure in the world like we're yes. part of our community and we're not ostracized um so that's where the fear of rejection comes from is actually yes. from 
way back when we had to survive and we had to in the community was the only place we could survive. So that's a part of this fear of rejection. It's like, you know, very old, ancient reptile brain stuff. So if you can say a few words about how we can let it not bother us so much if we feel like we spent hours on this piece of oh, content. Yeah. Um, mm. Like I know one of your processes has like, different stages of content yeah almost uh -huh. um okay. and and whatever yes. else you want to add to oh yeah this so the different stages rejection. i'll just kind of give people context for that i think of all content in three stages one is casual and exploratory which means the very first time i publish a piece of content video writing imitation book whatever even a book it is considered to me to be stage one, meaning this is the first time it's touching an audience. And because I'm agnostic about what value it's going to have for the audience, I care. Not, not that when I say agnostic, it's not, not that I don't care. Of course I care about helping them, being a value to them. But at the end of the day, they have to tell me, right? Mm -hmm. So stage one means anything that's put, put out there for the first time, no matter if I worked on it for five minutes, or for five years. The first time it touches an audience is stage one, okay? Right. Because everything can be improved after you get some audience feedback. So that's stage one. And then stage two is taking a look at my recent pieces. I do this once a month. I take a look at the things from the past month. And I go, oh, this is interesting. Look at this one did particularly well. That one, nobody cared about. This one was okay. Oh, this one did really well. Oh, this one, nobody. So I look at the ones that did well, and then I bring it to stage two by editing it, editing the piece of writing to make it even better. If there's something I want to add to it, some section to take away or whatever, just to make it better. Maybe there's another story, another example, if, if, if it comes up. And then after I improve it, I reshare it. I maybe buy a Facebook ad to get that, get that piece of content out there even further. And that's stage two. Stage two is to is to improve and distribute further. And then stage three is where I monetize. Stage three is, you know, I do this twice a year. I, well, I do them more than twice a year, I guess. But with my books, I do it twice a year. I look at the stage two pieces that, that did well. And those, those form the back, backbone of my next book. And then I might fill in some, some of the other details with stage one stuff that was okay. People thought it was okay, but I'll just fill it in. But the backbone of the book is state the stage two pieces. And then I do this when I say I do them more than once a year. It's I, 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 I do a new course each month. And I know that's, that sounds crazy for introverts, but, but I've worked into this. I've, I've you know, eased into the process. Mm -hmm. So now I'm used to doing a new course once a month. And of course, it's not that I'm completely new. I take previous material. Mm -hmm. A new course is a new product, which is stage three, again, is taking things from before that work and monetizing it now, turning it into combining it, making it something that people can buy. So, um, but to your point about if something doesn't work, if the audience doesn't like it, yes, I put something out there a couple weeks ago. I had such high hopes for it. I thought it was the greatest idea. And then after 24 hours, nobody had purchased. Now, when I put this out there to mine, they're like, oh, but, but we want to, or we're planning to, or something. But the thing is, I know from past experience, I put lots of things out there. Yeah, like I said, I have a new course each month. And within 24 hours, it's a good sign for what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks of marketing it. Hmm. So if the 24 hours, there's no purchase, it's not a good sign. You might get a few sales over the next few weeks. So then, so then I gave myself a couple hours of like depression and like, oh God, why didn't it work? <laughs> but, I, but I knew I was giving myself that time, you know, and then I, after the, the depression, you know, naps and everything, then I went on a walk. And then of course, movement tends to, and nature tends yes. to shift our perspective again. Absolutely. And, for introverts, right? especially. Like, mm -hmm. Get us out of our little story. And so, so then at, after the walk, I realized, well, that means I have to launch something new this month, I guess, you know, because I do have financial goals. Right. And, and just to mention, not that I must meet the financial goal or I'm going to be out on the streets, but I'm going to keep my financial goals. I'm going to try anyway, 
Because I believe in experimentation. Mm, love it. Because I know that the experimentation grows my skills and my understanding of my audience. So, wow, what a wonderful, I get two experiments this month, not one. And I think two is probably the maximum. Like you don't want to like, I put something out there and then like put something out there every third day because the, the thing didn't work. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying, but you know, have a maximum, like oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do one a month, maximum of two. So usually I'm, I only have to do one a month, but this month I have to do two experiments because mm -hmm. the first one didn't work. So, so I, you know, the second experiment I put out there after, after a few days and within 24 hours, there were four or five sales. My God, oh, that's not my goal. Cause my goal is usually, you know, between 25 and 50 sales of a, of a thing that I offer each month, right. but that's a good sign the first, first 24. Cause I have another couple of weeks of marketing it. And so, and yes, indeed, that, that, that second offer is picking up and now it's going to meet at least a minimum for the month. So it's, it's really, um, I guess maybe the, the lesson I can extract from that is rhythm. Hmm. You know, it's to have a rhythm so that it's kind of like, um, like a musician, you know, if, if a musician is doing, doing a show every night, Last night's show didn't go well. Well, they have to sh <laughs> they have to play tonight anyway, and we'll just do our best tonight. You know, last right. night's show didn't go well. I mean, any kind of um, well visibility really is is like that. It's when we, but unlike a musician, we had we haven't booked the shows every night, so that's why we have to create our own rhythm. Yeah. To say, oh well, I'm going to do two content pieces a week, two videos, two articles. Hey, that one didn't go well. It's okay. I have another one on Friday I'm going to do. Brilliant. Absolutely. I love that. It's that sort of consistency because none of the stage two content can happen if we haven't got enough stage one. Exactly. You, if, you, if you only have one piece of stage one, that's the only thing you can judge. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and the other thing that I so loved, I think you may have mentioned it in the same video, I'm not sure anymore, is how when the audience doesn't like what we offered, we may have put our heart and soul into it and we thought it was a really great offer and it's something really valuable. If the audience gives us feedback, they didn't love what we offered. It doesn't mean anything about our worth. Oh my God. Yes. Oh yes. It's the longer, and this is the longer we spend on something, the more we attach it to our worth. Hmm. So we have to, we have to realize this. So the longer you spend on a project, the more you need to realize there, the more detachment work is needed when you put it out there, <laughs> the detachment inner work. This is why I always recommend, if possible, for all of us to launch things quicker um, so that we don't have to do as much inner detachment work <laughs> from the thing that we're putting out there. And so that's why I think that's one of the reasons my strategy is of putting something out every month. I mean, an offer, like a thing that I want you to buy. It's because, hey, I only spent maximum of one month on it. You know? uh, so, um, yeah. you know, I, yeah, it, the, the thing is also, I have come to realize, I think this is true for everybody as I work with clients too, that everyone has an infinite well of ideas and the content and offerings within them. It's really, really true. Um, we, because we worked on something, we think, well, that's all the ideas that I have. This is the best of what I can give. And what we're doing at that point is we are totally writing off our, our future. Right. <laughs> we're writing off our future. It's like, no, the fu your future self, you, there's no way you can be as brilliant as I am now. But the interesting thing is the past self we wouldn't want our past self to write off our current self. We, we want our past self to believe that we could be better and better and better, you know, and what we have currently, I'm sure is probably better than what we could have created in the past. Now that we have more experience, more learnings or same thing with our future, we're going to have more experiences, more learnings and just more ideas going out on a walk or taking a shower or doing whatever it is just gives us ideas, you know? Yeah. And so, so realizing the infinite well, the unlimited depth of ideas within us means that, oh, that was just, remember, 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 that was just one idea of a million that I'm going to have. I'm going to get really curious. Oh, I wonder what other ideas I'm going to come up with. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And I think I, I really took that to heart because I, I heard you say this a couple months ago about the infinite well of ideas. And as I'm going on my content journey, I suddenly start finding like, it's not only just after a client session, but it's just like I'll be going for a walk and I'll see a tree and I'll think about the tree and suddenly a, an idea pops into my head about how I can relate nature to my work. Or yeah. um, It's because it's almost like, I don't know if you know the, the system in the brain called the RAS, R-A-S, the reticular activating system. Yes. When, when we tell it what our goals are, it keeps on looking out for us. It's like an antenna. And so when we make it our goal, like I need content brain, um, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to keep looking for ideas and it'll keep on serving us for us. I think also if we take action on it, if we just do nothing with those ideas, the brain's just going to say, okay, well, you're not interested. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stop coming up with him. So we do yeah. need to take action. Yes. The ideas that we get. Yes. That's so true. When I started content back in, consistently back in 2015 i had been in business for like you know five years without being consistent with content and i finally said i'm going to get consistent with content in 2015 i thought okay i have two content ideas <laughs> i think that's about it you know and i just i want to put it out there i'm going to see what happens maybe it'll just i'll get famous with those two ideas of course it didn't happen but once i put the two ideas out i was like okay i gotta make more i actually made a commitment to myself this is this is maybe more extreme than what people would want to do, but I made a commitment. So I'm going to do five videos a week for, you know, all the way up until a hundred videos. Now, the reason I did that was because, um, well, I, one thing that made it easier because I walk the dog every day and I'm out in the park. And the first video that came was really like, I'm here in this beautiful park. I might as well shoot a quick video. You know, it's gorgeous here. And I have something I want to say to my, to my clients. I always think, I just think the most supportive people I can think of to talk to, let me talk to them. Brilliant. I'm not going to think about the people who have their arms folded, it's like prove to me your worth. Brilliant. No, I'm talking to the people who are like open arm, open, open hands, eager, uh, accepting, loving, supportive, talk to them. So, okay, record a quick thing. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm on this walk every day. So uh, I'll just Monday through Friday. That's what I'll do. So I think it's really helpful to come up with some design, you know, get a coach, hire Liesl, how, you know, get a coach to help you design what the rhythm is, what the situation is for you. Some of you might be doing the walk thing. Some of you need to do it in your home office. Now I do my videos in my home office. I've switched my, 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 my strategy now. But uh, find, a, find a way, find a time, place that can become consistent. Let your family know about it or whomever, whomever you live with, you know, put that into your schedule so that's really sacred. Um, and so with that rhythm, you then have lots of chances. And with that rhythm, you, you then signal to your brain, hey, something's going to something's gonna happen. Friday's content day or whatever, maybe. So, yeah. Absolutely. That's brilliant. And I just wanted to mention another thing that just popped into my mind um, because it was one of the most helpful things you ever, that, that it's almost like it switched my brain from worry and stress to relaxation and excitement about who to speak to. So you just mentioned a moment ago to when you imagine speaking to people, you know, think of the most supportive and the client who loves you the most while you talk. And then another thing you said some one day was don't think of the people in your current audience as much as the people who are still going to find you in future. Yeah. Right. Ooh, that that was like a game changer for me. I couldn't yeah. believe the wisdom of that. It completely is yeah. like, oh, I can drop all the nervousness about the people who yeah. may currently not like what I have to say. No, yes. And there are plenty in every audience, not – not that they don't like what we say, but it's that um, out of any hundred people, let's say, even the hundred Facebook fans, okay, there are, I don't know, a handful. I don't know what the number might be for each person, but let's say there are 10 out of a hundred Facebook fans who consistently at some level like our things. And then there's 90 who are like, yeah, once in a while they might like something that we have, but most of the things that we put out there and most things I put out there doesn't impress them 
they don't like it, they don't comment, they don't share. It doesn't matter. You know, doesn't, they just float, they just keep scrolling, right? Right. That's true of any audience. That's true of every audience. The majority don't comment, like, or share, or even pay attention. It's the small minority who do. Now, that small minority, the reality is that small minority is multiplied many times out there in the world. It's just that they, ha they haven't discovered us yet. Mm. That's the truth. They haven't, dis they haven't, like if they knew about us, our thing, they knew about your posts, they'd be like, oh my gosh, that she, she, she thinks in a way that I want to be thinking or she, she shows up in a way that I want to, I want to be in the world and that, and so great to have found her, you know, mm. like they have no idea who you are. They have no idea who you are. They have no idea who I am yet. And so it's our opportunity. And we might even say our responsibility in this life to reach them. And so we make it for them. We make it for the ones that are looking for us, you know, the way we are without having to pretend to be anybody else. Absolutely. And I think that is just so relieving for most introverts is I can just be who I am. I think a penny dropped yeah. for me one day as well. I was like, I, don't, I can just be me. I don't have to show up like yeah. it will tr pretend or try and yeah. be like anybody else. It's, it's, this just has to be me. That's all. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And that's yeah. who people will love. The ones who really need what I have to say. This is what they want. You know, it, it's, it's so true. I mean, it's like no matter how I look, no matter how I sound, there are people out there who are going to resonate with just who I am. It's, it's amazing. It's really amazing. And not, not that, okay, if it's going to take, you know, two seconds for me to, to brush my hair, it's okay. It's okay. Do, do that. Right. But I don't have to work hard to, you know, have the right outfits and everything like that. And kind of work myself into such a perfection, perfection before I show up. Yeah. Same thing with our writings. You know, we don't have to be, you know, a, a Pulitzer Prize winning novelist before we start sharing our stories we just simply share our stories and somebody out there is gonna be like your story is a lot like my story thank you for telling it you know it's true it's really true yeah yes yes absolutely and so just um a show of how we just show up authentically before this um interview i thought i have to lock this zoom room and i did <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> there we have. So, a person just showed up a minute ago. So, we just, you know, that, that's what happens in business, right? We have well, she unexpected. Was, she, she knew what happened right away. And she's like, okay, I better leave the room. It's kind of like someone peeking in. Oops, there's a meeting <laughs> happening. <laughs> well, that'll be a good lesson for me to listen to my intuition in future. <laughs> I, I have to do that. I, I, always, I always try to remember, oh, lock, lock the room. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. It's like, it's like the audience doesn't care. The, no, so if somebody is watching this go, well, I can't believe she didn't, you know, somebody just showed up. That's so unprofessional. I'm never going to watch this, these, either of these people again. Great blessings. Yes. You know, go on. You, there's plenty of people for you to watch and learn from. Yes. But most of us, most of the people watching this who are going to benefit from this, we're going to go, oh, that's an interesting lesson. Oh, yeah, that's, you know, I got to remember to do that, you know. So it's like everything is blessing the people that I, I call our true fans our true fans are, are they, they are attracted to the substance and the core of who we are. The sort of the, the toppings, the makeup, the, the stuff at the, the top, it, you know, it might be interesting and it might be fun sometimes, but if that doesn't work out, if there are mistakes, the true fans don't care. Yeah. That's so. so beautiful. That is so beautiful and valuable, I think, for us to remember. Thank you, George. And I think we're coming soon to the end because I know you have a next call in a couple of minutes. And I want to just say a few words about some of the courses. So if anybody's um, out there watching this and thinking, wow, this man, George, is amazing. I'd love to learn from him. He offers the most amazing, like he said, a new course every month. And usually they consist of three modules, George. Yeah, three little sessions. Yeah. Right. And then there's time to implement in between and learn and ask questions. And he gives the most amazing resource documents with it. So you've got everything. You don't need to sit and take crazy notes because it's all there um, in a wonderful community. And I've um, uh, attended so many of these courses with George over the past two years and loved every single one because there's 
uh, he teaches a lot of, you teach George, a lot of uh, principles like big picture as well as the nitty gritty details. And I think that's what's so valuable for, for most of us is there's um, the attitude that we can go into for this work and also absolute specific details of how to do something. So I've attended something on Facebook marketing, resonant marketing, authentic con content marketing, and a whole lot more. And George, the next topic coming up, if you want to it's say about, a few words about that. Yeah, it's about clarifying our core message. And it's something I, you know, every course that I teach, I myself am relearning and implementing myself. So I'm as I prepare the course, I'm all, I'm doing the exercises myself. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm so great. Grateful to have re reminded myself of what my core message is that I'm trying to bring out to the world, which also of course gets, gets into my marketing as well. So that's, that's the next course is kind of like clarifying the thing that we're bringing out to the world and how that fits into our marketing. So I'm excited by that. Oh, beautiful. And I will put for any for, because um, this will be on YouTube, on Facebook, on my website as well. So I will put all the links to George's website and his Facebook page in the comments or in the, the blog post itself. So if you want to look up George, it will all and, be there. So. And I, I'll just take a moment to say, Liesl, I hope people will look at your content because you are now a model of showing up, being yourself, blessing others. And I love that you've been doing that through your generous writings on the various topics of you know, how introverts can thrive. And now you're doing videos as well, more consistently. And I think it's great for you just to show up. I love your, oh, and of course you're, you, you, you teach and you show people the tapping, you know, right. EFT tapping you know, on the videos. And I think it's really valuable. And oh, so thank, thank you, you for, for showing up and, and being who you are to your audience. Thank you so much, George. And I've learned so much from you. I've, I've been at this business for many years and never have grown, I think, as much as I have with the work that we've done together. So mm. I really have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for this yeah. really wonderful conversation, just from a heart place, from two people who love talking about their passions. Um, I'm really grateful to you for this marvelous conversation that I know is going to help many people. Mm, thank, thank you. you. Thank That's you great. so much. Thank you. And to everyone who listened, thank you so much for spending this time with us. I, we know that your time is valuable and you chose to spend it with us today. So thank you so much. And we trust this was as valuable to you as it was to me. Have a wonderful day.